Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that episode, that special E3 Square Enix episode of Jammed at Turbo as much as I did. I was back here laughing the entire time. So <laughs> next up, we're going to take uh, the promised gameplay peek at Murdered Soul Suspect. We're going to dive deeper into the game with a walkthrough led by senior designer at Airtight Games, Eric Studer. And he's going to give us a peek into the world of Salem and the many mysteries that it holds. So enjoy that look. Hi everyone, this is Eric Studer, Senior Design Producer at Airtight Games, and it's my pleasure to present Murdered Soul Suspect, a supernatural detective thriller that's a brand new blend on the action-adventure genre. In this collaboration with Airtight Games and Square Enix, we asked the player to solve the hardest case of all, their own murder. Detectives aren't supposed to get bloody knuckles. But I've done a lot of things I wasn't supposed to do. I lived through it all. Beatdowns, the backstabbing, disrespect most people wouldn't see in ten lifetimes. And I never lost a fight. Until now. Hey man, what are you doing? Hey! Move away from the body now! The fuck is this? Hey, did you hear me? What you just saw was the untimely demise of our protagonist, Ronan O'Connor. Ronan grew up on the streets, and because of that, he has a particular perspective on the world. He brings his experiences with him as he does his work as a detective with the Salem Police Department. You know, great idea, Baxter. Tamper with the evidence. Backup. Who needs backup? You shouldn't have tried to be one of us. <laughs> Man, you were one dumb son of a bitch. <clears throat> Sir? Hey, 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 Baxter, hey! Hey, just get back to taking them statements. Come on. Yeah, I'm the stupid one. This is not your scene, Lieutenant. Just pay your specs and move on, please. Yeah. Maybe it's not my scene. But it is my case. Tomorrow it'll be my case. And the next day. Until we catch him. You do well to remember that, Sergeant. Look, I'm just following Captain's orders here. You know the procedure when a family member is... Take all the time you need, LT. Don't worry, brother. 
Remember, ghosts never die. And do me a favor, con man. Tell Julia I miss her. She knows, right? She knows. I need to get my eyes on Stuart's notebook. See what they found now. Did you see the man in the hood? Yes. I don't know if she saw anything. He killed that man in the street. He stole my heart. No need to be so secretive, boys. We're on the same team. Now, I've been investigating this case for a long time. I gotta see if they found any leads that I don't already know about. Murder takes place in Salem, Massachusetts. Salem has a very rich supernatural history, which we draw on extensively for our game. It also has that New England small town aesthetic that makes such a perfect setting for the events that occur to Ronan over the course of the game. The other stuff that you're gonna see are these sort of ethereal glow bluing vestiges. These objects are part of the dusk, the same limbo realm that Ronan now finds himself in. When someone is murdered or suffers, the energy that they give off leaves an imprint in the dusk, which is represented in these living world objects which you see around him. Now, Ronan is capable of lots of things, like passing through most living world objects, but dusk objects actually present blockers to Ronan, so he cannot move beyond them easily. In life, Ronan was an excellent detective, and the first thing that you're gonna see here is his incredible observational abilities. As I examine Ronan's corpse, I know he was shot after he fell from a fourth story window. Bingo. I knew it. However, I'm limited as a ghost. A living world detective can actually interact with the evidence he has. He can pick it up and turn it around in his fingertips. The cigarette over here, I can't pick that up. Ronan has no ability to examine it. In that sense, he's limited. But as a ghost, he has so much more power. Because unlike a living detective, Ronan can possess human beings. And while you can't directly control a human being while possessing them, you can do things like look through their eyes. I need to find information that could be relevant to my case. So I look up and down his notepad, and I see that he's written down that the victim was shot with his own gun. This gives insight into what was going on with the bell killer and indicates that he hadn't planned for this to occur. He didn't bring a weapon, so he used mine? But mean? Ronan could do more than just look through the eyes of the people he's possessing. Over here, I see two police officers. Now, I can't hear what they're saying, but if I possess Officer Robinson and listen through his ears... What a night, huh, Robinson? Yeah. Crazy. Ronan, unbelievable. I don't get it. What was he even doing here? Asking for it. Witness called in saying he saw the killer into a building. Ronan responds, disregards orders for backup. Next thing you know, the killer tried to see if he could make him sprout angel wings. And then bam, 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 bam. You really, Seven to the chest. You really, point blank. You really have no idea when to quit, do you, Baxter? <laughs> Ever take a look at those tattoos of his? All that gangland prison crap? He was more criminal than cop. Yeah, you live like a thief, you die like a thief. He was still a badge, dickhead. So, 
But Ronin can do still more with his ability to possess human beings. Over here, you can see that there's a witness who is trying to give a statement to a police officer. If I influence her and using, use one of my own memories, the case in this case, my killer, nice. I can get her to think yes. about that particular that subject. Sucks. That man in the hood, outside, uh, looking up at, at the top apartment on the fourth floor, I think. Does that mean the killer came here for a reason? So now I've got information about the witness. She was too distraught to give information to the police officer. All right. But by reading I her mind, I now have information that the cops don't have access to. So I've collected all the critical information on this crime scene. And so now it's time to make a deduction. In this particular version of the deduction, I need to put the pieces in the right order. So first, I need to figure out what the cops know. Well, I know a little bit about what the killer's M.O. was based on Stewart's notebook. Good. And I know that they know a little bit about what happened here, the events of the murder, because of the conversation. That worked. But now I need to figure out Actually, what I do I know the that the cops don't know. Well, it was the mind-reading information I got from the witness. Outside, uh, looking up at, at the top apartment on the fourth floor, I think. The killer came here for a reason. But what was it? The apartment up there must have some clues. So that's my way in. That's closed. Fantastic. Well, here's my chance. I just need to follow Stuart into the building. So I mentioned before that Ronan could pass through most living world objects and was blocked by vestiges. But there's another thing that he's blocked by, external walls of building. I mentioned the, the sort of foundation in the supernatural that the town of Salem has. Well, in our game, the citizens christen all of their buildings. What this does is it creates a supernatural barrier that prevents spirits from entering and exiting freely. The only way Ronan can get in and out of buildings is by finding a breach in that barrier. Now, Officer Stewart ahead of me has opened that door, creating the breach that I need to get inside. Hey, Sarge, 1019. Please return to the scene. 10-4. So now I'm moving on to the second key component of our product, which is exploration. Now, as I mentioned, I there's no the way cool. to pass through exterior walls without having a breach in the supernatural barrier. Interior walls of buildings don't inhibit me the same way. In fact, almost every interior wall in the entire game, Ronin can pass through freely. This opens up entirely new ways to explore the environment, find new side quests and collectibles, as I make my way over here, I'll see a side quest I can participate in. Excuse me, sir. Do you think you could help me? I'm feeling a little lost. I, I can't find my body. I, I just remember being with an old couple. But I don't know. Do you think you can help me? Old? I'll see what I can do. So this young girl was murdered, and she believes that the elderly couple in the apartment across the hallway did it. So using my ability to pass through, my ability of possession, and my ability to mind read, I can hear what he's thinking. Nightmares? It's a nightmare for me too. Didn't think I swung the pan that hard. She just collapsed my paper. And now, the paper girl is under rock. So I know that this man killed her, but I don't know where her body is. If I possess his wife, though, and mind read her, 
Why did I have to bring that up? I had to look at her face right before the pan hit. The drive to the quarry was the longest five mile trip of my life. I now have all the information I need, so I can go back to the young woman and tell her what I've discovered. And this will allow her to go hunt down her body and hopefully find peace and complete her unfinished business. I think you'll find your body buried in a rock quarry about five miles out of town. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. You know, I never really liked cops when I was alive, but you really came through for me. So let's go ahead and move up to the second floor and continue the investigation. How the hell did it come back? Did I do that? Hey, hey, come back! Great. Looks like some sort of code or something. All right, well, I made it up to the fourth floor before the police cart away the evidence. As you can see, Ronan has more power than even he is aware of. The other thing that that cinematic showed you is it hints at a side quest that'll play a crucial role in the, over the course of the game. Side quests are important in Murdered because it gives the player a chance to learn not only about the characters who inhabit this space and Ronin, but also about the sound of Salem. This graffiti here, if I reveal it, it'll tell me more information about who that young girl was. Okay, so now I wanna go over here and I'm gonna malfunction this particular stone. Now, if it gets the attention of this young lady, which I believe it has, she's going to wander over and examine it and see what has happened. Now, in this particular case, it's a fun little bit of poltergeist. But later on in the game, that ability to, limit, in a limited capacity, interact with the living world will play a crucial role in the puzzle solving of the game. It's mine. The dusk is not a safe place. What you see here is the first of several demon types that the player will encounter over the course of the game. Now something I want to draw your attention to here is the fact that we want the combat in Murdered to be very intentional. We want the player to understand the combat space, build a strategy, and execute on it. The demons are incredibly strong, and if you attack them head on, you will be defeated. So it's important to get behind them when they're unaware and rip them apart from the inside. This represents sort of the holistic design that we're taking with Murdered both in the case of investigation and exploration and combat. We want it to be very intentional, very thoughtful. We want the player to constantly be engaged in the game and always be thinking about their next decisions. It's that sort of consistency of design that we're going for. Now here, you see that on the street, we use possession to solve crimes, but now we use it in combat. We can defeat demons by hiding within living targets. In addition to possession, the player can also use pass-through to get behind enemies and hopefully get advantage of them when they're not expecting it. One more ability I want to show here is something that we're calling teleport right now. It allows a player to silently sneak up behind enemies and then attack them when they least expect it. 
These three abilities are just the tip of the iceberg. When the product ships, there's going to be plenty of strategies for the player to use to build their own path through the combat spaces. A quick note about enemies, they used to be human ghosts who have been slowly corrupted by their dusk over many, many years. Their last instinct is the belief that devouring other human souls, they can regain their own humanity. Okay, let's enter the apartment and finish this investigation. Okay, folks, I need you to keep your distance from the scene here. Now on the street, I showed you how possession can be used in a special way to gain advantage where a regular detective wouldn't be able to gain headway into a case. The player can do more than that though. Here we have things called memory residues. And by revealing them, I actually bring a memory back into the investigation space. Now that it's here, I can investigate it and draw information from it. In this case, it's obviously the killer here and he's looking for yeah. someone or something. What is he looking for? Okay, so let's continue on with the investigation. Over here to your left, what you're gonna see is a baseball bat. If I investigate this... I knew it. Yeah. Good. It's interesting because this is clearly a metal bat, but it was bent and it was done recently because it's part of the crime scene. Damn, this guy's strong. All right, so now I'm going to make my way over and continue investigating the apartment. On the other side of this living room, I'll see a broken window. If I interact with this, it's clear that this is the window I was killed from. Nice. All now, right. It was broken while there Ronan struggled with the bell killer and was then thrown through it. God. I didn't stand a freaking chance. We'll move into the bedroom now and continue the investigation. You'll see that there's another memory residue here. And if I reveal this one, I can see that there's a witness. Now, this witness is obviously watching the killer as he moves through the space. She's frightened, and so she's hiding from him, hoping he doesn't see her. Bingo. Nice. The case has just taken a turn, but I don't know where the witness went, so I need to keep investigating. If I move over here, I'll see a bulletin board, and if I interact with a photo on it, I'll get a psychic imprint from it, and this will give me new insight. Father, you? Uh, do you have anywhere that I could stay just for a little while? Oh, of course, dear. The church is always your down. I think we have an old adage you can stay in for as long as you like. Church isn't too far away. Should be enough evidence to put this together now. 
So now I have all the critical pieces of information. So let's complete this deduction. Now, on the street, I was asked to put the pieces together. But in this version of the deduction, I actually have to put the pieces of information in chronological order. In this instance, the eyewitness was here first, at which point the bell killer showed up and was looking for her. Ronan arrived, confronted him, but was overpowered and thrown out of the window. I knew it. Turn around. You're under arrest. me down in the street and you didn't even check for witnesses like you're untouchable that girl was my only lead i need to find her by piecing this all together i now know where the witness fled i need to chase her through this window hopefully i can still catch up with her find her at the church and maybe she'll lead me to my killer so i can bring him to justice what you just saw was the beginning of a very robust and very interesting supernatural detective thriller that we think is both incredibly original and incredibly compelling. Thank you so much for watching the demo, and I believe that we're going to have some really interesting stuff for you in the very near future.